Hi, my name is Israel Vasquitelli, and welcome to The Turntable, a roundtable discussion featuring music and entertainment business students, artists, and anyone with a vested interest in the music industry. And today, we have three special guests, including Dave Cool, the Director of Artists and Industry Outreach at Banzoogle.com. We also have Byron Peck from the group Action Speak Louder a post-hardcore band, and we have singer-songwriter Aliel. If both of the artists wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about some of the things that you typically do to reach and grow your fan base online, and then I'd love to hear maybe some perspective from Dave. So go ahead, Byron. All right. Um, so the best thing I can say is leave no stone unturned. Um, any outsource that you can find to, to get yourself out there, uh, do that um, and just market yourself the best way that you can. Get on social media, get your music on all the sites and stuff like that, and just reach out to people. Awesome. Um, I'm actually starting right now to release my music a little bit more, and I'm working on a marketing strategy, uh, especially to build up a fan base to release my uh, single. So what I'm trying to do is to uh, emotionally connect with my fans, especially when I meet them personally. Indeed. So, Dave, there's so many destinations, let's say, for artists to, you know, live and connect online, you know, whether it be their website, obviously, and every social medium. And then, of course, we have all these other platforms uh, beyond Banzoogles, such as Reverb Nation and Bandcamp. If you don't mind talking a little bit of how an artist should balance that. Yeah, so we really see the artist website as your hub online. And then all of these other profiles are your spokes. So it's kind of a hub and spokes approach to marketing. And social media is awesome to go, first of all, engage with your current fans, have conversations with them, answer questions, share your latest updates, and also find new fans uh, using different tools um, to find fans similar uh, to your band. And, and using targeted ads if you're playing live shows and things like that, you can get really really specific with some of the targeting tools on like Facebook and Twitter and things like that. But you want to make sure that on a regular basis, you're posting content that will drive these fans back to your website because then you own the data and the emails you're collecting on your website. So you'll know where your fans are from, what brought them there, what marketing campaigns are working. And you can use that data to then plan tours and plan other marketing initiatives. So it's really... You shouldn't be posting every day on your social media, like, go to my website, go to my website. But once in a while, send people back for some new content, new blog posts, something like that. So just make sure you're, you're capturing some of those fans who on social media might just be there to hang out and check the latest updates. But then if you want to try to monetize, then you want to get them on your website, get their email address, and then keep in touch with them that way, which will lend itself better to generating revenues. It's interesting to kind of, after all this experience online to see this evolution of kind of moving away from having your own website. So I, I love to learn a little bit about how Banzoogle helps artists utilize that to the best possible uh, results. Yeah, so obviously with free social media tools, the temptation, well, it's free and everyone's on there like Facebook, Twitter. Um, and it's super important. I don't want to minimize the impact that social media can have on marketing your music. It's, it's, it's necessary and, and really important. However, I mean, talk to any record label, talk to any established manager. They have all their artists have their own websites, have their own mailing lists because they're looking to make money. And so when you're starting off your career, social media is great and you're building up your fan base and you just, that's your, should be your sole focus is building up your fan base. And then when you have a bit of a fan base, then you can start thinking about monetizing them. And that's where mailing list comes in to, to play a little bit more. With Banzoogle, I mean, we just make it super easy to have a website. You don't have to hire a designer. You don't need to know any coding. It's just all point and click. I like to tell musicians it's so easy your drummer could do it. You know, like it's just, it was built for people who don't want to have to learn anything technical. 
it was built by musicians for other musicians and so everything's everything's there you've got music players you can sell your music sell merch run your mailing list run a blog it's all in one place and you don't have to that's done you're done awesome so your website's done and, and we have integrations with you know facebook twitter instagram youtube soundcloud so you can all these tools that musicians are using, it all connects to the website and then you can share content directly with these platforms. So it's just trying to make it easy to have that central hub that you can, you know, you, as your starting point to market your music. I noticed on Twitter that your band has a lot of traction. You have a lot of followers. What are you doing there to engage with your fans? And are you using that platform to drive them other places? Um, we use a third party uh, app um, that kind of helps us manage um, all of our social media, well, uh, Facebook, well, um, Instagram and, and Twitter. And through Instagram and Twitter, we try to draw them to our Facebook page. Uh, it's from our understanding that labels primarily look at your Facebook um, following um, because where Twitter and Instagram are follow for follow, Facebook, they have to actually search for you to find you. Um, so that's a little more important there. And then um, we just try to engage uh, with them through uh, this app lets us use um, uh, auto DM system where it automatically sends them a message once they follow us and it reaches out to them and says, hey, this is who we are. Um, and we can also target um, people who are uh, interested in similar bands. Um, so if somebody likes uh, a band that we've drawn a lot of um, inspiration from and we make our music like and say, hey, like we noticed you like these guys. Um, you want to check us out and let us know what you think. So what I've done so far, uh, Facebook is a platform where I have the most following at this moment. And most of them I got in from uploading a couple of videos of covers and YouTube. So those two videos that I uploaded got quite a few views uh, and from them, they ended up following my Facebook page, which was the one that I was using uh, the most as an artist. I recently created a Twitter. I haven't like figured out the whole thing yet, to be honest. <laughs> so my following is not that great yet. And I do not have a page, but we're working on it right now. So we're creating content at this moment. We're creating like logos and all of that. We're like at the creating stage. I was um, working on my EP and we already have a couple of singles ready, so we've been creating a lot. So what do you think? I mean, what's the line between connecting and also pushing whatever it is that you have? What, what's that balance? Yeah, I mean, the 80-20 ratio seems to be a popular one amongst marketers in general. Like Google Pareto's principle. <laughs> there you go. Um, like 80% of your content should just be connecting and really socializing on these social media platforms and 20% should be more self-promotional trying to drive sales but there's also a way to do that by being genuine and you know it doesn't have to be very corporate sounding like buy now or on sale today for you know talk to your fans like like you normally would but yeah sometimes you have something new that you're going to sell and and if you're really genuine about it then you know, they're likely they're going to respond to it. So uh, I think I think we're going to wrap up, and and I love to introduce a special performance from Aliel.
See you next time on the turntable.